How do you make assets in the project view? If you're only using scriptable objects, there is a big wide world about to open up for you. You see, in this video, I'm gonna show you an efficient way for your tools to mimic the way Unity does it, starting with something simple and heading to the more advanced. This video is in response to a viewer question on my last video where I showed you how to efficiently make game objects in the hierarchy. I showed you how to get the menu in the right place, create the various options, and also get immediate renaming working. So first off, let's see how Unity does it in the project view with creating a scriptable object. I have this one called Make Game Data. Its functionality is irrelevant and way too powerful to show in this video. When we right click on the project view, there it is in all its glory as a menu item. And when created, we can immediately rename it. We can also press escape at any point to abort the creation of this particular object. This is all thanks to the attribute above the scriptable object called create asset menu, which automatically lists it in the assets create sub menu in our project view. So let's say we want to create a data file of some variety that isn't a scriptable object. Maybe we have a code template creation tool that spits out scripts formatted to our liking, or we might have a tool that creates textures with randomized patterns. For now, in this first example, I'm going to spit out a text file, which weirdly enough, I've been asked to create a tool for many a time by different companies. Anyway, let's get on with it. First things first, we need to create a menu item. Now we want to put this menu item in the create sub menu from the right click on our project view. So we use the path assets create and then append onto that whatever we want in this case text note now the class and function we are interested in here is a secret it's been redacted from the unity documentation it's called project window util and the function is start name editing if project window exists now for the first parameter we will just leave it at zero because we're not creating a preview ahead of time i'll show you that in an example later Next, we need an end action. Now this is a class we derive from end name edit action, and we will run this when the naming has happened. We can find the end name edit action here in Unity's API. And oh, look, there's a link to the start name editing if project window exists function. Well, not really, it's actually not there. I think Unity are bored of me bringing this up with their documentation problems, but that's a grumpy old man video for another day that I probably will create at some point. Now, moving on, we need to create this class and override the action method. We will leave this blank for now and come back to it. Now we have that class, let's create it above using the scriptable object create instance method, which takes our newly created class type. We can now stick that as our second parameter. Moving on, we go to the path. And here I have a bare basics method I threw together for this video for getting the selected folder, which we can combine with any sort of default file name we want to. That path will go into our third parameter. Onto our fourth parameter, and that's an icon, and we can use the following line to get that. As for resource file, we won't bother with that in any of the templates we're doing today. We'll just leave that as null. Dropping down into our end name edit action class, we can fill in that action method. As this is a basic create black text tool, we can simply create a text file and refresh the database. Now, obviously we could actually pass in details to populate this text file. I'm not gonna do that in this example, but it's relatively easy to see how you would do it. You just create this particular class and then send it some parameters to fill this area in, maybe based on the selection you had or something you've pressed ahead of time before you make this creation. I'll let you do the math on that one. In Unity, we can see that going to a folder and selecting our new menu item creates our file, and we can immediately rename it. Or in another instance, we can decide against creating it at all by pressing the escape key. Exactly the same way that Unity does with scriptable objects. Now let's see a little more of that functionality by creating a random texture file and previewing it before we actually create it. This time I've gone ahead and created the outline ahead of time. We have our path with our random.png, and I've made a little method to create a texture of a certain size based on a Perlin noise and a randomized offset. We can then create our instance of end name edit action as shown below. The icon, I do a little bit something different here by asking Unity to get me a mini thumbnail for the actual texture. Think of this as a bonus tip for those that have stayed this long into the video. 
Now let's fill in the start name editing method. The second parameter, through to the last, are the same as the first example. But because we now have an instance of that texture 2D already, we can pass its ID through to the create action method. Now following through to that method, we take that ID and we use the editor utility and the instance ID to get the object of that texture 2D. Using that, we can encode it and write it out to a file, not forgetting to refresh the database afterwards. Now in Unity, we have our new menu option, and when we create, we get a brand new preview in our inspector of this randomized texture we created. And of course, the file is selected to be renamed. We can do it again and give it a different name this time and see a different texture. But what happens when we cancel the creation? The file will disappear in the project view, but the preview remains in the inspector. Now we could just move on, hoping that Unity clears it up later at some point, and I'm sure it would, but we're good little developers. So we'll head back into our code and we'll override the canceled method. And we'll use that instance ID to object in order to provide the texture to destroy it. Now back in Unity, canceling will clear up the preview in the inspector as well. And there you have it. We have cloned the Unity process by utilizing code that isn't in their documentation. And maybe after they watch this video, it still won't be in their documentation. In the next video, I plan to amaze and astound you with something so powerful, it will increase your productivity by more than 1%, maybe. So make sure that you're subscribed.